So when you get the camera, the Kronos, you set it up, you turn it on, it's pretty much in this kind of configuration. You go tap here, and then down here is where your frame rates are. It starts at a thousand, and then you're gonna, you're gonna use this wheel here to kind of like scroll through, and then you push it to select your frame rate. Okay, but then watch, pay attention. The speed or the frame rate also shows you what the size of the image is going to be. So if I want 11,000, whoops, 11,000 frames a second at 1280, you're just going to get this tiny little sliver, that little white bar over like, this is what your full image could have been on the sensor. So it shaves resolution for speed. So you can also, you don't need something so wide. Like I like 640 by 480 to film something at 4,000 frames a second. That's a reasonable box I can use. I'll go to 640 by 240 to get 8,000 frames a second. And if I go higher, then, you know, it'll go all the way to 40,000, but that's a really tiny little window. And you need a lot of light. The faster you go, the more light you need. Uh, lights are going to flicker. Um, I have this one light, this emulant, that when you turn it on full power, it doesn't flicker. And I have studio lights. So once you pick your frame rate, we'll just take a thousand, right? Uh, you're also going to change your shutter angle. So I have a, I have this set to shutter. So it goes from 360, if you look down here, right, it's close to 360. If you slide this down, your shutter angle gets uh, smaller, okay? Ew. Basically what that means is, uh, it's like shutter speed, I guess. Think of, of, a, of, of a circle spinning and how much gap you have to expose the frame to the light, if you will. Um, if you Google online, they can tell you what's a good shutter angle. I usually just go 180, double, Double the frame rate that you're going to play back or something. That's what I heard. But I just go about half, 160 or 180, I mean. And that will help minimize motion blur. If you have this all the way wide open, it lets in a lot of light. But your images will get blurry. Uh, like things moving fast won't get blurry. So if you want to, sh like, think of shutter speed on a camera. The faster the shutter speed, uh it can freeze things in time basically. So you see less motion blur, but you need a lot more light. Uh, every time you make an adjustment, like shutter speed or uh, your record settings, you need to cover up the lens and do a black calibration every single time. And you just hit this button here, touch screen, black calibration. Sometimes an error message will pop up and it says, oh, do you want to cancel recording? Just click yes with the, the thumb wheel thing. Uh, something else to change also is the white balance. Uh, just pick a general white balance, you know, if it's bright daylight, right? Or if you're using flashes or stuff like that, or um, artificial lights. But just daytime is perfectly fine. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Uh, focus aid. So... You see that the red line on that remote control? That's the focus aid. I mean, it shows you that you're, you're, you're focused on it. That's pretty much it. Um, right, you have manual focus. Uh, and I leave the aperture as wide open as possible on the lens. Uh, you can stop it down and close the aperture a little bit, but that re reduces more light. Uh, when you hit record, Make sure you hit it again to stop the recording and then hit play to preview your recording, right? Once you find the position that you want, like, okay, let's say you fired a bullet and okay, it starts right there. You can also adjust like scroll frame by frame or up here. Right now it says play rate 60 frames a second. I just usually use that and I touch this sort of scroll fast forward 
button. So it's going to play at 60 frames a second. You can sort of find your start position. Like say you fired a bullet and you want the moment right before the bullet fires. You find it, hit mark start. Then you keep playing until just the part you want it to end. Like say the bullet's left the barrel. Mark end. And then you hit save. Okay. Under settings, I usually just leave it as H.264. You can do higher, you know, quality raw files, but they're a pain to edit and play back. So I just leave it H.264 um, and it saves it to the SD card. So if you do a recording, stop, and you try doing a recording again, this message comes up. Start recording anyway and discard unsaved video and RAM. Yes. And it's going to record. Stop. So if you see that, that message, for some reason it was recording, maybe you, got, you bumped this button or whatever, just hit yes and it'll record or hit no and cancel out of there. Or you can touch the screen too. Uh, under utility, there's not really much there that you need to play with. If you do go through network, so let's go back. So touch utility, it's gonna pop up this menu and then you're gonna go into network. So if you plug it into, so I have this thing plugged into a wireless uh, router and it shows up on my, my tablet or laptop. <clears throat> You need to write down this address, right? It might be different for you. So always go in here and check on our network. Internet address 192.168.0.100. So that's the address I put in there. HTTP uh, colon backslash backslash or forward slash, yeah, forward slash forward slash. And then you enter that number <clears throat> that matches here. And then this uh, online user interface shows up. So you can control the camera through here, but there's a little bit of lag. I noticed. Right, so this is dark and this is still showing me light, which is annoying. So I also have remote trigger for the Kronos. It plugs into this little BNC port. And once you have the camera settings all set up, you just push the button, light turns on, make sure you turn it back off, and it stops recording. If you shoot, if you don't save this footage, okay, and you hit record, it's going to record again and overwrite that. 